Welcome back to JB Reviews. Today we are going to be starting our towing test with the 40 foot fifth wheel with Big Boy. Whew, and I'm already tired. It's only 8 o'clock. We've been up since 5 o'clock. We're getting our workouts in. We haven't been working out for a while and we just started doing it back about a month ago and I'm super happy and proud of my wife and I because it is not easy when you haven't done it in a while but Oh, tires are pretty much aired up to 80 psi and one thing I always recommend is do not do this with the Sun hitting the tires it's pointless so do it while the tires are in the shade preferably in the morning time or late at night now one thing I'll say is these Goodyear tires I did take off those trailer King tires I literally have not put air in these tires probably in like three months and they are like at 79 80 psi respectively but i still put them up to 80.1 and if you don't know i had a gmc and so i have the tire pressure monitoring system in there what's up baby and so my chevy silverado should be able to connect with these let's go ahead and check that out and see if it works now i got this off of amazon probably about i don't know probably four months ago when i bought the gmc probably five months ago now and this is supposed to help you set up the tire pressure monitoring system on the trailer. It did work, but it does take some time. It's a little cumbersome in other words. So let's go ahead and jump in the truck and let's set up the system. You will need your truck on to pretty much get your tire pressure monitoring set up on your trailer. Now this truck did not come with the tire pressure monitoring systems. They came with my GMC. So we're basically gonna be setting them up with this truck to see if it works. So I'm pretty much where I need to be at. So all I have to do now is just pull down my seven pin plug, plug it into the truck, and then we're gonna see if we can get these sensors set in. I already have my fifth wheel set up in here. Now let's go to, yeah, tie. Oh, perfect. So they already pretty much give you the system here. So all you have to do is just set it up. So we're gonna use a tool. We have tandem axle for tires. We're gonna set this at 80 PSI. Hit next, tap start setup. So we should hear a honk, there you go. Activate the tool near the valve stem. So we're gonna go starting with the first tire, second, third, and fourth. Now last time I did this, it did not work with my phone, so maybe my camera might be different. I got the first one to work without the camera. Let's see if I can get this one. Okay. So, thank you, wifey. My wife actually is showing you guys what's happening on the inside. So, for some weird reason, I think my watch or my camera was interfering with this. So, there's an easier way. You can just inflate or deflate the tires to do it. So, if you don't want to buy a tool, you can do it the manual way. But we're pretty much done. It shows that the tires are at 70 PSI. It's actually at 80 because, like I said, I did set them up. Love the fact that they show you the tire temperature. And that's pretty much it. Now, the way I get it to work, you have to hold it between the uh, valve and basically right where the tire is. And just do it on both sides and in the middle. I feel like once you find that perfect spot, it kind of becomes easier for all the tires. Alrighty guys, so I finally got my jacks figured out. You guys saw the tire pressure monitoring, so let's go ahead and go through really quickly all the towing features, okay? So let's just really knock out everything on the truck first. This is gonna be the Gen 2 L5P Duramax. It's a 6.6 .6 displacement, and they did update the turbo and the combustion, which did upgrade the power. So it's gonna have 470 horsepower, 975 pound-feet of torque. When I do the towing test, you have to listen for the sound of this engine is definitely a little bit louder and it sounds really good. 10 speed transmission behind it. So as far as your numbers go, 
Gross axe weight rating up front is going to be 6,000 pounds, and this has a class leading 10 4 gross axe weight rating in the rear. 14,000 pound GVWR, and this truck does have a 5,363 pound payload capacity, which is pretty big. 40,000 pound gross combined, and here are the towing numbers 20K for conventional and 31,000 for gooseneck and fifth wheel. One thing I like about Ram trucks is they give you a gauge summary. I talk about it all the time. This truck does not have that, but you can add the transmission temp now on the gauges because they did give you this new gauge cluster. I have my tire pressure right there. When I hook up to the trailer, I'll show you this screen in a second, but exhaust brake is right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. There it is. And you have your tow haul mode right there. So you push the button. It does change the battery to the transmission temp, but like I said, I have it right there. Fortunately, my truck does not have the bed view camera, although it should, but you do have these lines if you are hooking up to a conventional hitch and you can do a bird's eye view too, but my tailgate's down, which is why it looks kind of weird. I don't normally talk about this, but you can shift down to L. Let me zoom in for you. Now this is the gear limiter, so you can limit what gear you're in. So this does have a 10 speed transmission. This is good for your climbing grade. So if you want to lock out, you know, ninth or 10th gear, you can do that. That way you have more torque in each gear. But honestly, having tow haul mode, that's all you really need. This truck does have power tow mirrors, although you still have manually operated convex. Come on GM, get together, let's get these powered. Ram does it. Oh yeah, mirrors have lights, so if you're reversing at night, these are kind of helpful. Eight foot bed, which is always gonna be better for towing a fifth wheel because it gives you more clearance. They do provide these steps too, which would be helpful for locking in if you're towing a gooseneck trailer. 36 gallon fuel tank is standard on all the uh, long bed and crew cab trucks with the standard bed. DF tank is seven gallons. Out back, you guys saw that you do have a backup camera. And there is a light for your conventional hitch. This is a class five receiving hitch, which is gonna have a two and a half inch opening. Great mounting points for your chains. Four and seven pin. Also, 342 rear end. So these are gonna be your Michelin Primacy XC tires. These are very comfortable tires. And they are a load range E, which is a 10 ply, LT235-8018. And here are the capacities. 3,195 pounds for single, 2,910 pounds for dual. Here's your leaf pack setup. You do have three leaves in the overload and then four leaves in the main pack there. It is a little bit different from a single rear wheel truck, however. This truck does have the optional fifth wheel prep package, which comes with the four and seven pin, and it should come with the camera above, but it did not. We won't go there though. And on the long beds, they do not sit the fifth wheel prep package behind the axle, which means you're not gonna have as much clearance for the tailgate when you're backing up to your fifth wheel, which I'm gonna to demonstrate to you now. So one thing I like about the longer bed with the wider hips is it does help lining up with your fifth wheel. So if you really get used to how much space you have on each side as you're backing up to the trailer. That might be helpful. Now I did lower my fifth wheel. Hold on, let me just make sure I don't run into my tailgate because I did lower it because I had to fix my jacks. And yes, I need to raise it up. I had to run home and get my camera bag because my tape measure's in there. So now I can see how good I am at backing up without even seeing the ball. I think I'm there. Let's see. You do have an electronic parking brake. Oh my goodness, I am there. So yeah, I am going to measure and then I'll drop the weight down because I have not actually checked to see how much it actually drops. But those are the overloads right there. And let's go ahead and drop the weight down. That's 41 and let's go 3 8 Three eights. I don't even think it even moved. 
Like those overloads make contact so much faster with this truck on the GMC and all the other Chevy trucks I've ever towed with in the past. They don't connect that fast. So they do change it a little bit. And I think they do that because this truck's all about payload anyways, right? And hauling big loads. But they are kind of, oh, that one's not touching. But the back one's touching a little bit, all right? But let's go ahead and measure and see where it's at. But as you guys can see, I do have a Reese Goose Box, which is what I use for my fifth wheel. I've been using it for like almost five years now. I need to do some videos on it. I see it all the time and I apologize because it's just hard. You know, it's out of sight, out of mind for me. But yeah, it is not squatting at all. So when I do level the truck and get the 37s, I can't wait to see how this all like works out for me. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> 40 and 1 8. That is not bad. It's a little bit higher than the 1 8, but we'll just use 40 and 1 8. If you really want to know, it's actually 3 16, but I'm going to use 40 and 1 8. 1.67 inches. I can't do that math in my head, obviously, but that's not bad. When you have a dually, it just doesn't drop that much. I think my Ram did just under three inches. I think Fords were like two and a half, two and three quarters. GM single rear wheels are like, I think like about the same in that ballpark, maybe three inches if you had a 2500. Now, let's go ahead and talk about this screen really quickly. So here's where I live at, if you wanna know. I live on West Honeysuckle Drive, so stop asking me. So here is my favorite thing about this larger screen. When you set up your trailer and you set up your tire pressure monitoring, by the way, when I had the GMC, I never took out the sensors. I now have two Chevys that can use those sensors. Isn't that awesome? That is the coolest thing in the world. So it shows you the tire pressure, shows you the temperature. That is super convenient. While you're cruising, going down the road, you can monitor your tires and know where you're going at the same time. Love it, love it, love it. And check this out. You can do trailer light check if you like. Um, it says no issue, so we don't have to do that. I can't believe this, but I forgot to show you the trailer brake. So there it is, you can add or take away from the gain. I think I have it at eight. Yep, eight is where I have it at. I had it at seven and a half, but I feel like it needed just a little bit more input. Now let's talk about this GCW. If you don't know what that is, it's a gross combined weight. That's the truck and trailer weight going down the road. If you ever heard of GCWR, gross combined weight rating, that's the maximum amount of weight that this truck is rated for going down the road. Now as far as this system goes, this, here's just some of the prompts. The gross combined weight alert warns you when the estimated vehicle and trailer weight exceeds your gross combined weight rating. And then they have this. It just kind of explains a little bit more. The gross combined weight rating is the max allowed combined weight. There you go. I already explained it to you, so if you want to pause and read it, feel free. When on, the system uses propulsion system torque data from your trip to estimate your vehicle and trailer's combined weight. If that estimate weight exceeds the GCWR, you will be alerted. These estimated weights may vary from your actual combined weight. This alert does not measure the loaded weight of your vehicle or trailer. The alert before your trip determines the actual weight of your loaded truck and trailer on a scale. Never use the GCW alert to determine if the vehicle and trailer are properly loaded or overloaded. Do not drive with an overloaded vehicle and or trailer. Death, serious injury, or property damage could occur. If you see the alert, stop your vehicle. And here it is. So. They put it in your face, guys. They put it in your face. So again, I know people say that you don't have to stay within your gross fuel weight rating. You just have to stay within your axle. Well, I can assure you, if you're using a single rear wheel truck, towing a 20,000 pound toy hauler, you are not gonna stay within that axle, I promise you. Because if you're putting 4,000 pounds of weight on the truck, where's that weight gonna go? The last thing I'll show you guys is the main screen. If you hit switch profiles, this is my trailer profile, and then you go to switch profiles. You can do a, an accessory, no trailer. I don't remember seeing that in the past, but it's probably probably been there. And you can do some things to import from your profile online. And I wanna say that's pretty much it, but yeah, stay tuned. I got some great towing videos coming on this truck. And I think some of you guys are gonna really find these videos interesting because I'm gonna go up a really steep grade here in Utah. And you guys know we are high above sea level, which means you're going to lose a little bit of power from these diesels. But is it enough to tow 13,000 pounds? I guess you have to wait and find out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on your bell notifications. See you guys soon.